Hi guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you a really quick, really simple, but extremely useful tip when it comes to optimizing your colliders. Now, a lot of the time, you can get away with using the generic primitive colliders, such as the cube collider, capsule, sphere, all that kind of good stuff. But this is gonna focus her in the mesh collider because the mesh collider is actually quite performance heavy when used incorrectly. So we'll start with a little bit of a brief description of what the mesh collider is doing. Basically, it's taking the mesh of the object that it's attached to and for each vertice, each edge, each face, it's creating a separate plane collider on top of the object itself. So if your object has 10,000 polygons, for example, and you use the mesh collider on it, you're going to get a 10,000 face mesh collider, which, it, just saying it, it sounds stupid. But there's really simple ways that you can get around this. I've seen some people using multiple box colliders. So for example, if you're doing a chair, you'd have one box collider for the back side of it and one for the seat and the legs, which is perfectly fine. That's going to work. But in the instance that you want to actually, say for example, turn off collision for an object for whatever reason, you'd have to do that on every one of those colliders, which again, may get a little bit messy. So the way that I'm going to show you, we're going to use Blender. It's free and it's relatively simple to use once you get your head around it. And we're going to optimize this mesh. Now I found this model online. It's free and I'll put a link in the description to where I got it from. So let's head on over into Unity and Blender and we'll start optimizing this. But first, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter, go check out his website, keep up to date with his latest news. And I also just want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. So that's Brandon Zill, Raf, Steve UK, and newly Matt Parkin. Love you guys, you're all fantastic. So let's take a quick look at this inside of Blender. So we can see it's all one mesh and we have about nine and a half thousand tries as part of this model, which is pretty well optimized for a game as long as it's one of the main aspects of your game. It's probably not the best if you wanted it sitting in the background, but this is pretty true to life to what you'd find in a game. So now bear in mind, we have this 9,500 faces. We pop over to Unity. If we were to add a mesh collider, to this tank, it's going to use the tank's mesh to generate that collider. And like we just found out, that's nine and a half thousand faces. Now, if we play this game, we'll see that it works perfectly fine. It's the only thing in here. So the game itself is pretty smooth. We can jump on top of the tank, jump on top of the actual hull. I don't know if it's called a hull. Please, someone correct me if it's not. And we can walk along the actual turret again i don't know if it's actually called a turret but we can walk along it the barrel is that it is it a barrel doesn't really matter but behind the scenes we're doing a lot more calculations on this tank than we actually need to and the way that we're going to fix this we're actually going to create a collider mesh for this tank we can pop back over into blender and we'll start by adding in a cube Press one on our number pad to get the perfect side view. And we'll drag this up into the tank. And we can just go ahead and start editing this mesh to better fit our tank. So we'll drag that face up, drag the front face outwards, and drag the back face outwards as well. And drag this one down to about here. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna apply the transform with control and A and then rotation and scale. And then I'm gonna inset this face, extrude it outwards to about here, and then do the same on the other side for the tank tracks. Next, we're gonna add in an icosphere, bring this up, and we're gonna stretch this to the point where it matches the uh, the top part of the turret here. So we'll move this down, scale this up on the Y, and then scale it on the X as well. 
And then we've got all this useless geometry underneath that we don't actually need. So we can delete all these bottom faces and only keep the ones that we actually want to generate a mesh from or a collider from. And we'll drag this back down to its original position. And the final thing that we want to do, we want to actually put a cube in for the barrel collider as well. So again, create a cube, scale this down. We'll pop this into position, drag it around a little bit, and then we'll grab these faces and map out where we want our collider to go. Finally, we'll just hide that tank just for now. And as you can see, we have a really basic shape that will act as our collider. So if we select all three of these objects, control J to make it one mesh, we can see that this now has 68 faces, considerably less than the model itself, which is gonna be perfect for us. So the final thing that I wanna do, I wanna rename this to be Tank Collider Mesh. Bring back our tank, and finally, one last time, because it's always a good habit to get into, apply that rotation scale for both objects. File, export as an FBX. So now that we've exported that, we can hop back over into Unity, drag in our tank model again, and now you can see we have the actual tank mesh plus an object for our collider. So we can go ahead and unpack this prefab and drag out our tank object, our actual tank mesh. And then we can delete the original model that we've just imported. And I'm just gonna put these materials back in here so we're not looking at some ugly colors. There we go. And now if we select our tank model on its own, we can add in a mesh collider and it automatically picks the tank's mesh because that is the one that it's referencing. But we wanna drag in under a uh, model, the mesh for the tank collider mesh. We drag that in and we can see we've instantly got a lower poly mesh for our collider. And if we were to play the game, we should see that everything works exactly like it did before, but in the background, there is a lot less going on. There we go. You may have to uh, size your colliders to exactly how you want it. This was just a quick introduction to this method. But yeah, everything looks exactly the same. If anything, it's actually slightly smoother to walk on the surface because every little nook and cranny doesn't have a collider sticking out of it. We've only got the blocks for the center and the tracks. We've got half an icosphere for the lid, and then we've got another cube sticking out just for the uh, whatever we want to call that. And optimizing your mesh colliders is just that simple. So yeah, this video has been relatively short, but I hope you've learned something, and I hope you're going to be using this in your own games soon. So with that, I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching guys, if you like the content remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.